Hello guys, welcome back to another video today with ARC Exotics and in this video we're going to be doing a full care and rundown setup on the Madagascan hissing cockroach and this is something I've wanted for a little while so I contacted a few people which I'll be mentioning later on in the video and basically got myself a little starting colony I think I've got two males, three females and I think I've got about three or four nymphs but as of yet, the delivery hasn't actually arrived. And they said they'll add little few extras in there for me, so we'll have to unbox that later on in this video and find out. Um, as of yet, I don't know myself, but it'll be about three or four. Might be a few more. Uh, but like I say, that'll be announced a bit later on. And we're gonna be doing the things a little bit differently. So we're using Herp Husk from Simon Ling. Um, so he's made his own substrate, as all of you guys on Instagram know about that. But it's mainly used for ball pythons and rack systems. But I want to demonstrate today that it can't just be used for that. It can be used for a wide range of stuff. And obviously it holds humidity quite well. So it would be ideal for Madagascan hissing cockroaches. So I feel like I'm going to use that um, because I've actually got a whole block of that that I haven't used yet. And I'm going to add some topsoil and some sphagnum moss. So I'm going to mix it all up. And hopefully it will make quite a nice little um, substrate for them. It'll be quite ideal to hold the moisture well. And like I say, I want to demonstrate that it can be used for different stuff. Uh, other than that, we're going to be doing a full rundown basis on it and see what you guys think. So let's get on with the video. So guys, this is all the equipment we've got. Like I said, we've got the Herp Husk, we've got the little Fanarium Exoterra. Um, and obviously that's still brand new. I literally haven't used it at all. We've got the divider in there as well. Um, but like I said, I won't be needing that because it's being used as a full system. Like I say, that was the Exoterra brand, obviously the Herp Husk, which I am looking forward to using and um, seeing how that sort of fares for something other than the snakes. We've got a bit of log, which was in the Locust tub. I thought I'd just take that out and break it up and see what I can do with that. And we've got a water bowl and a food bowl. Um, I tried to get as shallow as possible for the water bowl. I've got a jug of hot water for the Herp Husk. So other than that, let's get into it. So basically what I'm going to be doing first is just warming up the herp husk and, well, firstly trying to get into it. Um, but once I'm into it, it's going to be breaking a little bit off and putting that into dissolving the water to then um, expand. And I have heard really good stuff and I heard it expand an absolute load. Uh, a lot of people online and on Instagram have been saying to do a whole block would take about 12 litres of water. So all I'm going to be doing is little bits like this first, then placing them into the hot water first, just little chunks, seeing how much I kind of get back, because I don't want to overdo it. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, I'm literally just picking picking the bits off uh, and doing it bit by bit. And as you can see on the top left of the screen, my little cat, John, who's a rescue from Blue Cross, he comes in and makes a little appearance before he gets spooked by me doing something. <laughs> But anyway, back to the video. So basically after five minutes, it expanded this much. You can see on the left there how much I put in and on the right, how much is actually in there. Absolutely loads. So you only need a tiny amount for this sort of tub. Um, it's not even a quarter of the hurt pass there. So it's, it's crazy. Obviously, put your hand in like you would any sort of substrate, hold it and wring it out um, because you've obviously got a lot of water. So once that is all done, it should look something like that. And as you can see, instant humidity from the hot water. And if you actually got the individual bits of wood and squeezed them, water would still come out of them. So it holds humidity really, really well. Um, so I'm thoroughly impress impressed with it so far. And as you can see, there's not really a lot left. I'm not going to add that because it's just little little bits and bobs. But like I say, um, give it a good squeeze, give it a good ring out. But on doing this, I did find that it actually smells really nice as well. So um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed by that as well. But you can't sort of miss it. It smells really like um, like coffee, really. But, yeah, um, Herp Husk, definitely recommended from me. Like I say, I've got absolutely loads left. I've hardly used it. So I might use it on a few other things. Um, I've got a bioactive setup coming up, so I might mix a bit of that in. But like I say, back to this little build. Now we're going to be using live moss. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically just get a clump of it, chuck it in the centre and just mix it all up. And I'm going to mix it all up and just give it a sort of you know, different sort of depth, not just bark, you know, a bit of moss, a bit of bark, a bit of topsoil. Um, so I'm just going to mix it up and try and sort of create my own own um, substrate. But I tried doing it with one hand and filming, and the moss is actually quite stringy, and it weren't separating at all. 
So it actually ended up being quite tricky. And as you can see here, I'm kind of struggling to separate it. Um, but yeah, basically just separate it, turn all of the bark over. Basically you want the sphagnum moss to end up like browny black colour. Um, not how it is now like this. But basically just turn it over as much as you can. Really like put it into the substrate and underneath it. But as you can see here, I'll go back to it now. This is something kind of a bit more what it should look like. Um, like I said here, it's quite stringy look. So it didn't just separate as easy as I thought. But yeah, you want it to be sort of a darker colour. Um, and obviously just, like I said, mix it up as much as you can. Now I've just got basic topsoil. Um, obviously you can get that from your garden centres. Don't need anything specific for that. Just as long as it's not got no added stuff um, for plant growth. Sprinkle that over only add a little bit at the start because you don't want to have too much because it will darken it um and again once that is in just same as last time just mix 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 it all up as much as you can and that just look more sort of natural like that as well um obviously it will darken the moss as well but with the moss and the herb husk in there it will still hold the humidity quite well so after that you just need to give it a good mix again and just sort of try and make it look normal like it's just sort of left there not set up sort of thing uh but like i say it's only for madagascan hiss and cockroaches so that doesn't have to be too fine but anything like that will do so now it's all how we want it what we're going to be doing is the layout so this is the water bowl again i tried to make it as shallow as possible because i know that you know they don't drown but they do struggle so a lot of people use milk tops but not being fussy i kind of like stuff to look look better than that sort of thing uh so yeah at the end of the day it's only a couple of quid um so yeah that is the water bowl on the left and the one i'm now putting in is the food bowl so it's a little bit deeper so you can get a little bit more in there uh so obviously them either side now this i weren't really sure what to do with this because there's not much height but it is curved here so i feel like they would appreciate it and sit underneath it so i thought i definitely want to implement it in but it took up a lot of room for what it was in a way so i thought i'll just leave it there for now and then continue with the build but as you can see at the minute, it's literally just water bowl, food bowl and wood. We've got a few other stuff here. So we've got this, which we took out of Rolo's, the Crested Gecko's tank. Um, I feel like if I sort of wind them around each other like this, I can maybe build a sort of bridge or an arch for them. Got some leaves because I've always got spare leaves, so why not chuck them in? And a few like rocks that we can just build up and put on the floor, uh, make it a bit more sort of natural for them. And the same with the hide. Yeah, they don't hide as such, but... They'll go in it, they'll go underneath it, on the roof of it, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, with this, I kind of want to definitely implement it in, but I don't really know how. So for the time being, I think I'll probably just take that out and add the other stuff in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is like a little rock like pile um, and have it sort of built up a little bit as well. So then I, if I lay the wood on it, that will be angled so they can get underneath it. Um, obviously, when doing this little things, you've got to make sure that the rocks are structured quite safe. Uh, that's a good thing about the like, you know having a thicker layer of bedding because you can push them down a little bit and make sure they don't obviously fall. Um, they are quite hardy hissing cockroaches, but still you don't want nothing to fall on them, especially a rock or a stone, because if they get trapped, then it will be no good for them. Um, so yeah, I just tr try to create that in the corner, just a different texture for them. Uh, the hide, again, it's just going to be in one end because I know they will use it, um like i say they'll go upside down onto it on the roof of it and if you bury it in they can sort of feel a bit more secure in there instead of just having it placed on the top so just like this dig a little bit out push it in and then chuck it back over the top to make it look sort of concealed into the corner so other than that like i say the hide and the rocks are all i've really done but you've just got to sort of cover it up a bit it really doesn't need to be anything fancy you can make it as basic or as fancy as you want um they're quite easy going, they're quite hardy creatures, so you don't really need to be fussy with it. Uh, I'm just using stuff that, what I've got left out of my room, so why not use it, do you know what I mean? So we've got the leaves, I'm just going to add the leaves over the top, because they might want to go on top of the hide, and underneath the leaves. So I'm just going to stick it to the side, and add it in. Obviously when they actually arrive, depending on what they are and aren't using, I might take a few things out, I might add a few things. But for the time being, as a basic setup, this is what I'm going to do. So, like I said earlier, I'm going to try and sort of twist this vine. I did use it for Rolo, but he's got so big now that it's too small for him. Um, and it sort of won't hold his weight, not stable enough. 
these aren't light as such, but they are much more lighter than a crested gecko. So I'm just going to try and twizzle them round and sort of place them somewhere. But like I say, it can literally be a tub with a few egg cartons, like egg crates, and a water bowl. And that's it, or even if you want to spray them. It doesn't have to be too fancy, but all in all, you know, it's, it's, it's worth doing because they're inexpensive to house, inexpensive to keep, and they're quite enjoyment as well from them. So, like I say, this is the hide. Um, everything sort of sorted how it is now. I've just left the wood like that. Didn't really know what to do with it. Again, I don't really know what to do with this either. Um, but, like I say, hide there, rocks, stuff like that. Now, I've actually ended up breaking up the the, the log because it weren't working. I've broke it up and I've now structured it across each other like this. So, as you can see, they'll get right under there. They like feeling tight and they like feeling secure. So they'll get under them little crevices. So I've sort of overlapped them onto each other. So I think there's three different bits there. And then with that, they'll just overlap onto each other, which they will enjoy quite a lot once it's sort of um, quite condensed in. And I've got two spare bits, so I'll either chuck them into another tank or just leave them for whatever. So basically that is the setup. That is all we need to do to that. Um, obviously this is new, so I just need to take off the film. I've heard a lot of good things about the Exoterra Fenariums. I've not actually used one myself. So we're going to have to sort of try and arrow this and see how it goes. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty sturdy. I'm a little bit worried about the nymphs maybe getting out of this top bit here of the of the uh, mesh. But we'll have to see. See how big they come, stuff like that. But like I say, it locks well, you know, it fits well. Um, it clips on to the base really well as well because a, a lot of tubs like that don't always clip on very well. But... Other than that, I would say it is very sturdy and I'm looking forward to housing the Madagascan hidden cockroaches in it. So after about 30 minutes of off-camera stuff, I finally managed to secure this little vine into place. Um, I had to take out all the rocks and logs again and sort of bury them under so it was sturdy. Obviously, I don't want that tipping over, um, but that was finally done. <laughs> so that is in there. Now with these bits, I heard they're really good escape artists and they're really good climbers as well. Not knowing how big the nymphs will be, it's definitely going to be worth taping across there. Um, just for your own sort of um, guarantee, you know, sleep a little bit better, better at night. Because you know they will crawl up the sides from the leaves and from the logs. And obviously you've got this bit here, but them holes are quite small, so they should be fine. But as far as the side panels go, you've only got a left and a right. There's none either side, it's just um, across from each other. So not too much tape but it will make it a lot, a lot better. So a couple of days have passed and I finally received my order from the Live Food Hub. Now they actually arrived in under 24 hours from being sent from the supplier. So again, excellent work from the Live Food Hub. Definitely go and check them out. I'm really impressed with how they've been packaged and how they've been separated in the boxes as well. Um, like I say, customer satisfaction for me, 10 out of 10. And considering COVID-19, they have been shipped here extremely quick, considering they've been traveling about six or seven hours overnight. So they've done really well. They're all healthy. They're all happy. And I'm super happy with them. So now we're going to have a little look at them and hopefully I can record a hiss from one of them. Uh, so if the audio is a bit turned up or a bit different, then that is why. So just bear with me. But like I say, we've got some earthworms as well for the bioactive setup. But this video is about these guys. So let's get into having a look what they are like. So as you can see here, this guy is a big male. So what we're going to do is just gently touch him on the top and see if he hisses. Come closer. Now, hearing that hiss in person right next to you is actually quite remarkable. The sound is not very, like, it's quite hard to describe. Um, but, yeah, absolutely amazing sound. And as you can see, they're all settled in. Now I've just got the babies. Um, I actually only ordered four, but they said they'd do a few extras for me, and I ended up with six. So, again, massive thank you to the Live Food Hub. They've sorted me out really well. And now they're all settled in, and this is the big male that was hissing at me, tucking into some tomato. So overall, I'm super happy with the new colony. So I come up to check on them uh, probably about two or three hours after I unboxed them. And they were all out exploring, all of the adults anyway, apart from one. Uh, as you can see, there's one on the side and there was one on this little vine. Thank God, because it took about 30 minutes to try and get it to stay still. <laughs> um, and then there's another one there with quite 
dark oh my finger with quite dark um orange on the on the shell which looks quite nice and that feels really hard and as you can see there's a little baby there uh he's doing well tucked away in the wood now this wood has already had like holes in from the wood lice the isopods so that little guy will appreciate that and this is one of the bigger males just exploring um it's quite interesting just to see him sort of do their own thing and all of them just sort of wandering about and you know just just chilling really uh i keep saying uh but i'm super happy with them and like i say as you can see they've all settled in well and they're all really healthy i really like that one down there um which is a female and as you can see that little guy just see his head sticking out of the log so there's actually three under there so that is where all the rocks were so they tend to actually like that spot quite a lot so guys that is basically today's video um all done and dusted i hope you have enjoyed it and again a massive thank you to the live food hub on instagram um they've only just started out their business probably about a month or so ago now they do all your live insects that you need and a few other little bits as well so check out their website see what you think and like i say locusts crickets mealworms waxworms you name it they've probably got it they even do stuff like earthworms as well um, but like i say it's not a sponsored video it is just me being generous because they've been generous to me as well and um, they've looked after me as a customer and i appreciate that so i want to give some back to them and hopefully help them out in some way as well but i think in the future i might actually start ordering my live food from them um just for loads of reasons it's a lot easier more convenient comes to your door obviously from delivery um but yeah so like i say definitely check them out see what you guys think uh, i've had a pretty good experience with them and i'm definitely going to be ordering again i have messaged them about a few, a few um things that is on my list some sort of millipede stuff like that but it won't be for a little while um so other than that i hope you have enjoyed the video and the cockroaches are hopefully going to be settling in well to the enclosure i'm going to do an update video and a few care videos on these hopefully you'll see the nymphs pick up some growth almost instantly and other than that thank you for watching the video and stay tuned for another one next week Thank <laughs> you.